And a little bit of karma on your Friday morning. I'm Holly Gale, joined in the studio by my BFF, Bill Show. Morning, Bill. Good morning, Holly Gale. How are you? I'm doing all right, you know, especially for a Friday. And, of course, our minds are on the fair, but our minds are also on that direction uh, because we've had a bit of an accident out that way. Yes, we have. Uh, just north of upper end of Fairground Road near the exit of 823, there was a motorcycle wreck at the time. All lanes heading north were closed. They're trying to open one lane at this moment. Uh, they were going to attempt to land a helicopter there to assist uh, those injured. But due to low ceiling, they're now going to be taken to a local hospital. Uh, we'll keep you posted about you know traveling on 23 North. Now, the good end of this is that the superload was able to get through before this took place. So it's not going to further impact traffic. Again, near the 823 ramp, exit ramp, north of Fairground Road on 23, expect severe backup in traffic. Yeah, and I know there's probably a lot of people out there that are immediately thinking, who do I know that travels that way for work? Um, and just any extra detail that we have, um, I, we, we were told that it's a motorcycle accident. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that, that should give uh, just, and we'll let you guys know as soon as we know anything more about it. And if you see something out there, give us a call. Give Let's us keep those folks in our thoughts and prayers. Yes, sir, absolutely. And time for news. This morning brought to us by Portsmouth Cancer Care and Associates, providing you with your roadmap to recovery. And here's Bill Shope with the latest. Thank you, Holly, and good morning, everyone. A pair of change orders approved by the Sayuta County Commissioners have allowed more money to be spent on a couple of infrastructure projects in the county. Nate Markham breaks down the funding as well as a shift in one of the timelines. At their Thursday morning meeting, the Sayuta County Commissioners granted two change orders to projects for the county engineer's office. One order grants an additional $190,000 to the Pond Run Road Bridge Replacement Project for retaining walls, bringing the total cost of the project to $1.14 million and extending the estimated finish date by approximately six months. The other change order allowed an additional $15,000 for the Franklin Furnace Stormwater Improvement Projects, establishing a new total cost of $296,860 for the project, but not affecting the end date. From the all-new Mix 99.3 and Fox Sports News Center, I'm Nate Markham. An Ohio-based retailer has revealed more about plans to shut down several stores nationwide amid financial struggles. Danita Harris explains. Big Lots is closing more than 300 stores nationwide in an effort to prevent bankruptcy, including eight stores here in Ohio. The company says it's part of a Securities and Exchange Commission filing stating that the U.S. economy continues to face challenges, which has impacted customers' ability to shop at its stores. According to the Big Lots website, more than 1,300 locations are still open. And Main Street Portsmouth and Bloom will be hosting the Farmer's Market tomorrow morning on the Esplanade beginning at 9 a.m. They're also going to be offering free school supplies. Now, why they last, here is the Executive Director of Main Street Portsmouth and Bloom, Emily Aldridge. Well, we've had great support, and it's very nice to be able to alleviate some of the burden on parents to purchase so many supplies, like, right before school starts. So we're very glad to be able to contribute to making this season a little easier on everybody. The Back to School Bash event is also sponsored by Ghost in the Attic Antique Mall, the Teacher's Apple, and Beale Office Supply. For Mix 99.3 News, I'm Bill Shope. Well, thank you, Bill. You're welcome, Holly. And now in a little bit lighter news, um, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and I will refrain from saying it the third time. Yeah, because Hoover will be popping his head right around the corner <laughs> the minute you do. Well, <laughs> apparently Beetlejuice is uh, teaming up with Fanta with the upcoming <laughs> movie to create a new haunted apple flavor that's going to be hitting stores next week. Have you seen this at all? No, not not. I've obviously you know seen the trailer for the films and everything. Oh, how so cool! I'm uh, I'm going to tilt my computer towards you. Uh, this <laughs> looks delicious. First of all, Fanta summon the flavor you want to. How cool! <laughs> Don't you love it? Oh, man, getting the Beetlejuice makeover. I'm definitely going to have to give this one a try. Now, even though I'm a Pepsi girl, I will dabble when it comes to specialty drinks, okay? Um, I am so pumped that they're coming out with another Beetlejuice. Well, I mean, it's got a great cast. It's got some uh, your members from the uh, first film, some cast members, plus uh, 
you know, Jenna's just, she's going to be such a huge, huge star. Jenna, oh, she absolutely is. If you've watched Wednesday, we're talking about Jenna Ortega, who was the lead in that, um, the uh, Adams Family spinoff. But she, uh, She's got a very interesting movie out right now on Netflix. Called? Miller's Girl. Miller's Girl. Yeah, it, it has, um, it's a different, it's intended for a different <laughs> audience than Beetlejuice or uh, Wednesday. I have literally Martin Freeman. no idea what that means. It's a little more adult. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take uh, it. <laughs> Martin Freeman from the British version of The Office and The Hobbit and everything mm-hmm. it, uh, plays uh, <gasps> an English I teacher. I love him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, okay. Uh, I, I saw an extended trailer, and it looks like a good movie. Um, she came out and said, all movies are not meant to be comfortable. All right. That is um, an interesting way to promote your movie. It is, but... Like I said, it's on Netflix right now. And that's been Pop Culture Corner with us. Come and catch a <laughs> flick, babe. <man. laughs> yes, like some some of the morning shows with Steve. Not everything is meant to be comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great way to put it, Bill. All right. Well, we, uh, yes. I just got this in uh, from Larry Mullins. Um, the accident that we were talking about earlier is on the southbound exit ramp of State Route 823. Traffic is moving slowly southbound towards Lucasville. US 23 is open, however. The Megalode in Pike County is, uh, excuse me, now he's saying the north exit ramp towards the (laughs) fairgrounds. If you're headed 23, north or south, expect heavy traffic delays absolutely expect delays and uh obviously we're bringing you the live updates literally as bill gets them to his yeah, Apple i mean watch. they're <laughs> yes they're popping right in no we appreciate you and larry dale if you are listening please keep the information coming and, and thank you larry absolutely and uh if you guys are passing by and you see something happen that we need to know about 354-1993 give us a call and i want to say thank you to our traffic tracker don who called in earlier um to keep us in the loop so like uh, Bill said, US 23, honestly, north or south, you are probably going to expect a little bit of delays, but more so northbound than anything else. You might want to try and avoid that area. But thank you for checking in with us, Bill, and we'll uh, tap you in for birthdays in a few. Yeah, absolutely. And, and make sure the people hang around for uh, you know the trivia. Mm. It's going to be a lot of fun today You know, uh, see what listener can call in and win. All right. It'll be easy, but it'll be fun. I like the sound of that. Easy and fun. It's Mix 99.3. Like <laughs> Voice with Cancer Care and Associates bringing you all of these updates. And ONN coming up next. For over 30 years, Dr. Inishita and his staff at Portsmouth Cancer Care and Associates have been changing lives with the most comprehensive treatment and cure for cancer in the area. During this time in Portsmouth, Dr. Inishita has created a name of patient excellence in the highest degree and will continue that fight with each and every patient towards the cure. Dr. I, as he's known by his thousands of friends, is proud to announce the addition of Dr. Hassan Jaffrey to the staff of Portsmouth Cancer Care and Associates. Dr. Jaffrey's medical expertise is with all cancers as well as treatment of blood disorders, bone marrow, and the immune system. Together, Dr. Inishita and Dr. Jaffrey create a very special team that's there when it comes to fighting back to regain your good health. Feel free to stop in and welcome Dr. Jaffrey to the staff at 916 11th Street or call 353-4884. It's Portsmouth Cancer Care and Associates of Portsmouth, always there with the care, the compassion, and the roadmap to your recovery. I'm Kate Burdett on the Ohio News Network. In Northwest Ohio, a former Lucas County Sheriff's deputy accused of kicking a teen in the face has been sentenced. Jeff Smith of ONN affiliate WTOL-TV in Toledo has details. David Terry pleaded no contest to negligent assault, which is a misdemeanor in Toledo Municipal Court and was sentenced to six months probation. He was also given a 60-day suspended sentence at CCNO and a $350 fine. Terry was previously charged with two other assault charges, but those were dismissed. Cell phone video showed David Terry kicking a 17-year-old while he and another deputy were trying to take the teen into custody at Franklin Park Mall in August of last year. Terry was fired from the sheriff's office for this incident. A ransom deadline has passed for the cyber attack on the city of Columbus and the hacker group claiming responsibility now says they've published thousands of files. 
Andrew Kinsey of ONN affiliate WBNS-TV reports. The hacker group claiming they initially took six and a half terabytes of data, three terabytes of that now released. We're told the information stole from city servers includes passwords, logins, databases, and access to city cameras. The city released a statement saying the city is participating in the investigation into the attack. For state news anytime, visit onnradio.com. I'm Kate Burdett on the Ohio News Network. And it's time for another look at sports. This morning, our sports brought to us by Collier Medical, located on Collier Corner in the Berg. That's 1661 State Route 522 in Wheelersburg. Collier Medical offering that uh, um, occupational medicine. And good morning to Chuck Greenslate. How are we doing, bud? How are you doing? Fantastic, Holly. As a Reds fan, I think I'm doing a little extra specially good this morning, as most Reds fans would be. Big victory last night for Cincinnati, and hopefully that sets the stage for what will be a positive weekend against the division-leading Brew Crew. Rightly so. And now, when we talk about the Brew Crew, how have they been looking here recently? Uh, I mean, they've been solid all throughout the season. I mean, as of late, the Reds just have been staying anywhere between 10 and and eight games back, so uh, the separation hasn't really uh, occurred um, streak-wise. The Brewers have won three straight, six.